Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Apologies if I sound like shit. I feel like shit. Um, I've got some rotten cold that's doing the rounds. Most definitely not the coronavirus. Uh, but it is just a bogo standard cold. So I sound a little bit nasally and uh, a little bit deeper than usual. But fuck it. Content waits for no man. So I decided that today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about heroes and their transition into Master Rule 5. Um, I've done a few of these segments by now and I'll be planning to do a few more. Just an interesting take on uh, my opinions on how I think the decks will do going into the new format, uh, if that format even exists for any period of time, given that we have no organized play, but it's mostly theoretical kind of look into things as they should be. Apologies if there are any crazy noises in the background. I'm recording this from the comfort of my work lunchroom. Uh, so it's nice and chilled in here. Nobody's in here since everyone's working from home. Um, however, there are still a few people in the office w waltzing about, but I'll stop waffling. If you do see me looking down at all, it's because I've got a notepad, so I don't miss any information I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, and bits that I've picked up on and sort of wanted to discuss with you in detail. So the first thing to note is that obviously Master All 5 gives a massive boost to heroes. They are predominantly a fusion-based hero, uh, fusion-based archetype, and uh, we have seen some links come out and that kind of thing, but... Let's be honest, they're, they're famous for their, their fusions and uh, they were kind of locked a little bit before, much like many other decks in that they required that extra monster zone to be turned into a link monster uh, zone with some extra arrows before they could go about the rest of their plays. Now, they've been pretty adaptable. In fact, last format, they, they had a pretty good one. I think most people would agree. Um, but they've sort of been on the, the cusp of almost being good. Um, they lacked some issues. Uh, sorry, they lacked some, some plays of going first. Uh, they kind of just go second and blow people out. Uh, some of the, the variants of that can play going first, but the, the strength is definitely in, in you know, just OTKing people and that kind of thing. So they lost a little bit of that with the, the need to have links in there. However, that need has now been removed because it is Master All 5. And so, of course, we're going to see fusion plays all over the place. Now, the question is, is to how much does that benefit them? Well, it's a huge benefit. It goes without saying. Um, they have lost one copy of Malicious. Uh, I do believe that they'll continue to, to use Malicious, which a lot of decks that would have just splashed it in for the sake of having an extender will actually not really be able to benefit enough from two copies of Mali. I'm actually shocked it ever went back to three because I was pretty sure it was going to stay at two. In fact, just before it went back to three, I was telling uh, Liam, who you'll have seen on the channel plenty of times, how I think Mali can never go back to three. And uh, it went back to three that week. So who knows? Maybe next format we'll see Mali back at three. But Mali's back at two. I do think that they're still going to use it because it just gives them that nice bit of extension. And of course, it's a hero monster, so it fits in with a lot of the requirements. So it has benefits just outside of being another body type on board. Um, they are still missing something, I think, from being the top deck, or certainly in that tier one category. Uh, I'd probably say they're in around the tier two mark at the moment. Just off theoretical, of course, I could be completely wrong when the format comes up. Um, but it feels like there's one or two spots where they, they play filler cards just to fill a role. That doesn't necessarily progress them in any way. They kind of play it because they have to. There's too many... Um, I don't want to necessarily say garnets because they kind of have a second usability but not, not really sufficient enough. They're sort of like pseudo garnets, I guess. Semi garnets, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they don't necessarily progress their plays enough. And anyone who plays the deck enough will know exactly what kind of cards I'm talking about. Um, and then the fact that Mali's now gone to two, effectively in a lot of ways it actually becomes a bit of one of those itself to some degree. And they're having to then play other suboptimal cards where Mali would have been perfect for that role because what you gain from having three massively outweighed the possibility of bricking on it. Um, the reality is now that if you open one in your hand that you, you're normally going to be in a difficult situation because you're going to have to get into Grave. And if you don't, before you see the other one, you're then stuck with two bricks. 
Um, usually with heroes, one thing I will give them some credit for is because they're such a cult deck, a lot of the people that pilot the deck actually are usually pretty good with it. Um, obviously, a lot of people do pick up the deck uh, for a bit of fun. However, it's actually quite expensive as well. Like some of the stuff has only really had one print. Uh, for anything that's high end, you are like, don't even go there, man. The, the costs of some of these cards are insane, especially the original prints, ultis and that kind of thing from old sets. Um, however, there are a lot of new players blooding into the deck, and they have had a few more reprints since, but you're still looking at stuff like, you know, a playset of Faris in there, um, you know, amongst other things, which cost a little bit of money. They have just got some new support as well. Uh, Extra Hero Infernal, which adds the two fusion materials to your hand uh, that are listed on a hero monster in your extra deck. Um, it requires two heroes to make it, so effectively it kind of replaces it. I guess it's a plus one. If my maths isn't wrong. Uh, it takes two, you gain him, and then you gain two to hand. So kind of, yeah, it's a plus one. Uh, so the card is decent. Is there enough space in the extra deck? That's a question that hero players will have to ask themselves whether it's worth playing or not. Uh, it was just released in a new set, so who knows? There is still going to be a lot of experimentation going on. Um, I think it may see some play. Uh, it'll definitely see some testing for sure. Uh, it's a fairly strong card against attack as well, but I think that's largely irrelevant. It's the two fusion materials that in hand. I think there's a real benefit. The question is whether you would rather play that or whether you'd rather just play a fusion that's more proactive, I guess, in the first place. Uh, that's entirely up to you. And of course, I'm sure I'll hear from hero players in the comments, or hopefully I will, um, about what they think about the new extra hero card. Uh, was it Infernal something, Diviner something like that? Who knows? So overall, I do feel like heroes are going to be a solid sort of tier two pick. I don't think they're necessarily crept into that tier one just yet. However, I could be entirely wrong. And I'd love to be wrong as well, because heroes has been around for such a, a long time now. It'd be really, really cool to see them do some bits in the modern game. Uh, they just get support after support after support. I think like Black Wings is probably the only thing with more support, or maybe even Heroes has more than them now. Who knows? But Black Wings are largely irrelevant, so we don't need to go there. But Heroes, they're a really, really solid deck choice, I think, as well. Um, the, the combos are fairly linear, so it's not too hard to get. Uh, the difference, though, is obviously that, that, that portion of players that are in that top, top level who can play the deck. And it will take it up a bit further. But I do think, like I say, a solid tier two pick for anyone that can sort of get their head around the basics of the combos. Um, it's got the potential to just go second and blow people out. And of course, there's extra zones now from Master Rule 5. The deck is going to feel some huge benefits from it. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. Hopefully, this deck's... The deck? Jesus, you can tell we're losing it with this illness brain. Hopefully, this video has been informative in some way to you. Uh, if you do have anything you'd like to discuss, definitely drop it down in the comments. I usually respond to every single one that I can, any that are reasonable, of course, uh, and any that don't get flagged up or spammed by YouTube. Um, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.